صلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدتا من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اخري اللهم فتحنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا رزقا طيبا وعملا متكبلا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعا اللهم أرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا آمين ثم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة البقرة ഫോർ <laughs> or evict one another from your homes then you acknowledge this while you were witnessing in the last five sessions we have been discussing the verse 83 of surah al-baqarah in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about the first eight out of the 10 commandments given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and the people of Bani Israel now in this verse verse 84 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the last two commandments given to them and these were what the Jews were instructed in two manners regarding their Jew brothers number one they were told that they are not supposed to shed their blood so the shedding of the blood of a jew brother by another jew brother was forbidden and the second is not to evict them from their homes now allah says here that uh, they initially they accepted and they acknowledged the commandments of allah and they made a covenant but later on they broke their covenant and um, if we realize here Uh, seeing these commandments the last two command, commandments then we will realize that the teachings of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in quran are very similar to the orders which were given to the people of uh, bani israel and hazrat musa alaihi salam just like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the last sermon he said that the life and the property and the honor of a muslim is forbidden for a muslim brother so remember and revise that the teachings of all the religions starting from hazrat adam alayhi salam to the seal of prophets muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they've always been the same because the religion of all brought by and taught by all the prophets has always been islam so the teachings have been common verse number 84 Verse number 85. Summa antum ha ulai taqtuluna anfusakum wa tukhrijuna fariqam minkum min diyarihim tazaharuna alayhim bil ismi wal udwan wa an yaktukum usara tufaduhum wa huwa muharramun alaykum ikhrajuhum Allah says then you are those the same ones who are killing one another and evicting a party of your people from their homes cooperating against them in sin and aggression and if they come to you as captives you ransom them although their eviction was forbidden to you and then in the next part of uh, the verse Allah says افتؤمنون ببعض الكتاب وتكفرون ببعض 
So do you believe in a part of the scripture and disbelief in a part? And then Allah tells the punishment and mentions the punishment of people who are doing this. Allah says, فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَيَّفْ عَلُوا ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا حِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَ اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ أَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Then what is the recompense for those who do that? Who do what? Who oppose, who break their covenants and who oppose the teachings of Allah and the Prophet and who kill and dishonor and evict their uh, religious brothers and who do what? Who take a part of the scripture and refuse and disbelieve in a part. In what will be the punishment will be for those who do that among you, except number one thing is disgrace in the worldly life. And the second, on the day of resurrection, they will be sent back to the severest of punishment. And Allah is not unaware of what you do. So now here in verse 85, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how the Jews, after accepting, after acknowledging the commandments of Allah, and of making a covenant with Allah, of keeping the life and the property and the honor of the Jew brothers and making a covenant, they again disobeyed Allah. Now, whose blood did they shed? Who did they evict? When and where was this done? To understand all this and to find answers to all this, I will comprehensively explain the, uh, the political conditions and the political state of affairs in the state of Medina before the advent of Islam and before the arrival of Prophet in Medina. So in Medina, as far as the populations were concerned, there were three Jew tribes, Banu Nazir, Banu Qureza, and Banu Aymata. And uh, these Jew tribes, they were populated and they inhabited the suburbs of Medina. That is that their colonies were in the outskirts of Medina. And in the main city, uh, there were two tribes, Oz and Khazraj. Now these two tribes of Oz and Khazraj, they were bitter enemies, which is that. And for the last 200 years, there was a battle which is known as the Battle of Boaz in the history of Medina. This 200 year old battle had been continuing among the two tribes. Now the two tribes, although they were at total peace with each other and the two tribes, they would never fight and they would never have battles with each other, but they were allies to the Oz and Khazraj. So you know what happened was, that when the two tribes, the Oz and Khazraj, they had a battle and they fought the battle, the Jew tribes, they also jumped in the battlefield to support their allies. So because of this, although there was no direct battle fought among the Jews, but as a result of supporting their allies in the battlefield, end of the day, what happened was that the Jews ended up in shedding the blood of their Jew brothers and evicting them from their homes. And this was forbidden to them. But to please their allies, just to gain the pleasure of their allies, they just, they just forgot about the pleasure and the obedience of Allah. And they broke the covenant and they disobeyed the commandments of Allah. Finally, what used to happen was that when the Jew tribes, whose ally they had been, if uh, the Jew tribe had been victorious, then they got the Jew captives. Then what did these ally Jew tribes do? They, in interest of getting the ransom money, after releasing the captives, in interest of getting the ransom money, they would remember and they would adopt the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tawbah. 
regarding the captives and the ransoms. Because obviously, because of this, they were going to get money and they were going to get a worldly gain. So actually, in the whole process, they disobeyed and they obeyed the teachings of their book and their disobedience and their obedience of the book was purely related to their worldly interests. When it seemed profitable, when it seemed profitable to disobey, they really conveniently disobeyed. And when the obedience of the laws of Torah suited them, they seemed to benefit out of them, they would start obeying the orders of the book so in this verse, Allah has mentioned this behavior of Bani Israel, and Allah has condemned and strongly negated this behavior. And not only this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also mentioned their punishment for this behavior. And the punishment is, Allah has condemned it like that. So do you believe in a part of the scripture and disbelieve in a part? And the punishment mentioned is what? Allah has clearly highlighted and announced that all those who adopt few commandments and leave the rest of the orders of Allah, they will be what? Number one, they will be disgraced in this worldly life. And on the day of resurrection, they will be sent back to even a severest form of punishment of hell by. What is actually being condemned and negated is the picking and choosing from Quran. Picking out. Picking out and obeying the orders of Quran, which are easy to adopt. Picking out and obeying the orders of the Quran which do not cause any worldly losses or any worldly harm or adopting orders which would bring worldly gains, worldly advantages. And because of adopting these orders, the person would acquire some profits and it, they would be useful and help for them, helpful for them in the society. So they pick out and they obey those commandments. But on contrary, they leave out the orders of Quran, which seem difficult, which seem hard to act upon. The orders we see, which if they obey, they would need to sacrifice in any form or the other, like a physical, uh, economical, any social form of sacrifice is needed to obey those commandments. Or commandments and orders, obeying which may cause some worldly loss or some issues or calamities or problems, or they may lead to deprivation of some worldly gains. So this was their behavior regarding the obedience and disobedience. This pick and choose of Quran is being strongly condemned because you know, what does Allah expect? Allah expects from all the Muslims to adopt the manner of we listen and we obey. We listen and we disobey has been mentioned in Quran as the mannerism of the Bani Israel, the, the cursed, the maghdub Bani Israel. A Muslim is accepted, is expected to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Hazrat Ibrahim as Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him and ordered him, Aslim, get obedient, obey, do this, don't do that. Then what did Hazrat Ibrahim salam do? He would obey without any delay, any postponement, any debate, any discussion, any, any doubt whatsoever. After Aslim, there was a spontaneous aslam too. This is how a Muslim is expected to obey all the commandments of Allah. And this will help him to come up to the level 
as a la says in Quran, enter completely into Islam. So obedience for Allah's bondsman has to be like what? Obedience has to be complete. It has to be perfect. It has to be wholehearted. And it has to be with full, complete steadfastness. A bondsman, a Muslim, a believer needs to completely and perfectly and totally surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is only by this manner that a Muslim will acquire what? What Allah says in Quran, Allah woman, ahsanu min Allah is the color of Islam. Because this is the best color. You know what? Just we just need to remember that Allah revealed the book, the Quran, in perfection and completion, as Allah says in Surah Al Maida. Allah has revealed the Quran over the period of 23 years in completion, in perfection, both in quality and quantity. And this is what he likes for his bondsmen. And not only was the Quran revealed in perfection and precision, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also promise that he, he, he will take charge of the protection of Quran. As Allah says, that we have sent down this al-dhikr, this Quran, and we ourselves will protect and take charge of its protection. So then as Allah has protected the book to its ultimate degree and extent, what we need to remember we need to understand and we need to realize from the core of our hearts that the perfect book, the complete Quran, the protected Quran, which we have received, all the words, the zayr, the sabr, the shad, the mad, they are all protected with precision to the smallest of detail. So we received it in this perfected, completed and protected form. We received it. We have it and we've had it and we read it. But we do not read it sitting in the luxurious couches of our lounges just to pick it out what we will obey and what we will not obey. As we read Quran and we, we cannot have the audacity to say and come up and announce that, well, you know, we can adopt this order of Quran, but we, we just cannot adopt that order of the Quran. And nobody can have the audacity to say that this do of the Quran, that this do of the Quran looks practical and adoptable in the today's modern world, but the other order of Quran, that order of Quran seems now unpractical and impossible to act upon in the period of, in this modern period. Just like a person coming up and saying regarding the economic and monetary matters and issues, a person coming up and saying, okay, fine, I can pay zakat if Quran orders me, I can pay the right of Allah on, on my earnings and I can pay zakat. And I can even spend in the path of Allah, lillah filla, I can spend the supererogatory sadaqat also. But if you expect that we will also leave usually your riba, then this seems like next to impossible. We just can't survive without this banking system and the loans. Our economy, our industry will collapse. Our businesses will crumble down. So accepting the order of zakah, ato zakata is accepted and haram or riba is left over. This is picking. This is picking and choosing for obedience and disobedience in Quran. Similarly, another person comes and says, okay, fine, as far as salah, 
we can cover our heads and we can conceal our hair. But if you say and if you expect and if you order that we go about the rest of the day in the same dress code, then this is for sure impossible. We, we need to go to schools and colleges and universities and we women folk, we, will, we won't get jobs. Our daughters won't get married. Sorry, we can't adopt this dress code for the rest of our, for the whole of our life, for the rest of our days going about. So what is this? This is a type of a hypocrisy, taking up a few when leaving a few orders of Quran. Orders of al alim orders of, of the Rabb who is all knowing, order of al haqim I would again repeat the punishment for the people who are picking and choosing in Quran. Number one, khizyun fil hayat al dunya, disgrace in the worldly life. And number two, yawm al qiyamati yugaduna ila ashab bil azab. On the day of resurrection, they will be sent back to even a severest form of punishment. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu now, here in this verse, we also need to realize another behavior. I would want to highlight another behavior which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has condemned in the behavior of the Jews. And the behavior is that despite making a covenant of obedience, still indulged in killing in murdering, shedding the blood, and evicting their Jew brothers. But if I stop here, we will realize, we will realize that the totally similar behavior is being demonstrated in the Muslim Ummah at all the levels. The Jews did not, did not murder and evict and shed the blood of the Jew brothers directly attacking them and having fought with them, but they did so indirectly. But we, the followers of the Prophet Sallallahu this is being committed openly and directly at all the levels, murdering, looting, plundering of Muslims at all the levels in all forms, directly and openly. At the domestic levels, every other day, there is news of the son killing the father or the mother, a sister killing a sister for a, for a piece of jewelry, husband killing the wife of the children. Similarly, the Muslim society, all the Muslim societies, they are full of all forms of murderers and decoits going about, looting, frontling, shedding blood. And still there's no law to punish them, to stop them. Muslim states, in all the Muslim states, People of one province fighting with the other province, the armies of the state shooting the citizens, one religious sect playing havoc on the other religious sect, blood being shared by the, shared by the Muslim sects in the mosques. And then the Muslim states fighting each other, one Muslim state, one Muslim country fighting the other Muslim country and one Muslim country supporting the anti-Muslim powers and countries against the Muslim states. Supporting the Jew world, supporting the, G the Christian world against their brother Islamic states. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten what happened just a few decades back? Iraq? Iraq supported the US Army attack Iran. And then, then just after a few years, Kuwait supported the US troops to attack Iraq. Why, why go that far? We, we need to look as what we, people of Pakistan, the state and the government of Pakistan is doing and have been doing after 9-11, Pakistan, hosted the U.S. with open arms against their fine brothers. We offered 
and we wholeheartedly provided our runways for the US fighter planes. They would take off from our rain runways. They would take off from our runway and from our lands and they would go and bomb the Fani brothers and sisters. We opened our sea routes, our land routes for their US containers carrying rations and arms and ammunition and foods for the dogs and their containers for the US army. Who are doing what? They were busy crippling our Afghan brothers. We have been as a nation supporting the US army in all their plans and all their activities destroying the Afghan as a nation. Allahumma fid lana walil mu'mineena wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat. Allahumma alif bayna qulubihim wa aslih zaata baynihim wa ansurhum ala aduwika wa aduwihim. Allahumma la'ani al-qafrat al-lazina yusudduna an sabilik wa yuqadzibuna rusulik wa yuqatiluna awyaat. Allahumma khalif bayna kalimatihim wa zalzil aqdamahum وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا تردوه أن القوم المجرمين Verse number 87 Allah comments and talks about these people أولئك الذين اشتروا الحياة الدنيا بالآخرة فلا يخفف عنهم الأزابة ولهم ينصرون These are the ones, those are the ones who have brought, who have bought the life of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So the punishment for them will not be lightened, nor will they be aided. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all listen to the Quran, connect with the Quran, Help us all understand and comprehend the Quran. Help us and guide us all. Remember the message of Quran. Help us and support us and guide us all to believe without any doubt the teachings of Quran. Help us all, guide us all to adopt and act upon the commandments of Quran. Help us all to stay steadfast in our connection and obedience of Quran. Help us, guide us, protect us against shaitan in our obedience and in our worships of Allah. Bless us with the best of companions in the path to Jannah. Make our, make our husbands, our children, our family members supportive in our obedience to Allah and in our worships of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gather us all. Gather us all with our families, with our predecessors, with our successors in Jannatul Firdaus. Help us be worthy of the intercession of the Prophet Forgive us all. Allah, forgive us all. Forgive us all. Rabbana zulamna anfusana. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي مِنْ كُلِّ زَمْبٍ بَأَتُوبُ لَيْكَ Allahumma innaka ahfuban qareemun tuhibbu al-afma fa'fuwanna 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 Forgive us all. Forgive our major sins and minor sins. Forgive all what we have done and forgotten and you've got it written. Forgive all what was forbidden and we said it, and we heard it, or we wore it. Forgive all what we spoke. Forget, forgive all what we spoke and we heard others. Allahumma hasibna hasan ili sira. Allahumma ajilna minan naar. Rabbibni li indaka baytan fil jannah. Rabbana la tuzi qanubana. بعد إذ خديتنا وحملنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستقبلك ونتوب عليك 
Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin subhan